Hi everyone, it is time for your new video and today I am so excited to bring you a reading vlog for the Historical Romance Readathon. So once again, the Historical Romance Readathon is happening and as always it's being hosted by Lisa from Remarkably Lisa, Lacey from Lacey's Book Lovers, and Jess from Peace Love Books. And I absolutely love this readathon. I have participated and vlogged it multiple times. I feel like the past maybe like four or even five times. It is definitely one of my favorite readathons and I love Lacey, Lisa, and Jess and it's just always such a fun time and I love historical romance and every single time it just reminds me of how much I love them and yeah so I just feel like this one is going to be amazing and honestly I think it's gonna be the best one yet. I feel like this time I have the largest number of physical books that I get to read because before I just never had access to historical romance, like not easily. And so I didn't really have a lot of them and well, or any of them at first. <laughs> and now I have a nice little pile. And on top of that, I have some coming to me in the mail. <laughs> so super excited. So I think I'm quickly going to go through this pile right here. I don't, there's no chance I'm going to read all of them, to be honest. But I want to read definitely a few because like these are all the ones that I have here. And the thought of running out of them, I want to cry. <laughs> um, but obviously, I also have some audiobooks and ebooks, you know. Let's go through these books really quickly. There is a bingo board, as always. I'm going to go find it. I would love to get a bingo, but as always, I just want to read a lot of amazing books and have fun. So, first book that I think is going to be the first physical book that I'm going to read is Falling Into Bed with a Duke by Lauren Heath. So, um, as you might see, I do have a bookmark in, in this book because I actually started it when I last did a 24-hour readathon, but I literally just read like 15 pages <laughs> and then ran out of time. And I was going to read it afterwards, but at the same time, I knew this readathon was coming. And so I didn't really prioritize it, and so I haven't picked it up again yet. But I am super excited for this, so does this work for anything mm, in a series? I also think that this might work for a rake, but not entirely sure. I'm super excited for this. Lorraine Heath is absolutely one of my favorite um, historical romance authors, and this is a new series that I haven't started yet. And so I am so ready to pick this up. Then we have a Tessa Dare book, and that is Any Duchess Will Do. And a part of me was like, I can't read this yet. This is the only Tessa Dare book that I own physically that I haven't read yet. And like the only one that I have here. And I'm like, I hate the thought of not having any other one. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, what am I waiting for? You know, like I have so many books that I've just been waiting for the right moment. But I'm like... If not now, then like when? You know, like for what am I waiting for? So I think I definitely might pick this up. And I think this works for the clinch cover. And um, so I don't know if there's anything else. But I just like, I adore Tessa Dare. And I just know this is going to be amazing. Then I have Never a Bride by Megan Frampton, which is the last book that I need to read in the Duke's Daughter series. So <laughs> it is the fifth book or the fourth book and I read it entirely out of order I recently finished the first book and because like I just the way I had it available was out of order and so yeah <laughs> but I absolutely love this series and I can't wait to read this so this once again works for the clinch cover and um I think it might work for Eris and again it's in a series honestly like all of these are in a series and yes so then i have these two books which are both in another series by lorraine heath and that is beyond scandal and desire and when a duke loves a woman again lorraine heath love her so much and the last book that i have by lorraine heath is lord of wicked intentions and so that i is actually the only historical romance i have Oh, no, no, no. I have another one. So one of two <laughs> historical romances that I have with a step back is the only one that I have here. And this is, I think, like a third book in a series. Yes, I know. 
what the fuck but <laughs> this is the first one that i got because like i just had no idea where to start with lauren heath and why did i read why did i pick up like a random book in a series i just saw reviews on this one and none of the other books in the series so i was like you know what i'm gonna pick this up it was stupid because like i do want to read all of them but you know mistakes were made we learned from it since then i did buy some books that are actually the start of the series and the last i actually I have two more books so the last one this one I don't think I'm gonna pick up just yet because I actually read this one already it is Tall Duke and Dangerous by Megan Frampton I absolutely fucking adore this book it is my favorite by Megan and one of my all-time favorite historical romances but I remember pretty much nothing about it so <laughs> I definitely desperately want to reread this one but I'm not sure if that's gonna be this week I feel like I want to save it for a little bit later once again I know but um definitely recommend this book it is grumpy sunshine and just absolutely amazing so the actual last book that i have here is um the league of gentlewomen witches by india holton i didn't have it on the pile because it's obviously um uh, trade paperback is that the name um super excited for this this one is quite different from the other ones there are gonna be some like fantasy elements but it's still like a historical romance and I don't love reading multiple books of the same genre at the same time. And so I feel like this would be perfect to read along with some of the other books because it's just gonna be it's just gonna have really different vibes, you know? So yeah, these are the physical books. And I think the last book that I'm gonna mention for now, because I don't want this intro to be a million years long, is one that I actually started a little bit that I'm so excited to have. And that is A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall. So this is this is coming out on May 24th. So I think this vlog is going to be up before that. So um, it's not out yet. It's available on Libro FM as like an advanced listener's copy. And I got so excited when I saw it on the list. And so I immediately downloaded it and I'm so excited to read it in here. It is extremely long. And so I started a tiny bit of it yesterday, but it's literally like 480 pages. The audiobook is like 14 hours. And so I saw that I was like, oh my gosh, but <laughs> I am super excited for it. And the little blurb on Goodreads says a lush sweeping queer historical romance from the best-selling author of, boyf of boyfriend material. So this is, I think, Alexis Hall's first um, historical romance. So the heroine is trans and she basically used to be best friends with the hero when they were little and then she went to the army and she basically got like presumed dead. Um, she could then like move somewhere and transition but that meant that she couldn't see her best friend for a really long time and so she basically goes to like visit him and he doesn't he just you know still thinks that his best friend is dead and he's absolutely heartbroken even i think it's like two years later and he is just like really struggling because like you know he loved her and he doesn't know anything and so she comes there and he like thinks you know she's like a different person and then i mean i guess like obviously along the way she is gonna tell him the truth and they're gonna fall in love and i just feel like it's just gonna be such a beautiful emotional romance and just like you know like the best friends to lovers and that yearning and like sadness and being reunited i feel like it's just gonna be absolutely amazing and so i'm so happy to have this I mean, I have many other plans, so obviously, as always, I'm going to read many other books as well. So that is going to be it for now, and, you know, let's just get straight into the reading vlog. Again, also, of course, all the hosts' channels are going to be linked down below. Definitely check them out if you haven't yet. And, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this reading vlog, and let's just get straight into it. So I think I did a whole update just now without filming. So it is time for a bit of an explanation and some context. So what you saw in this first initial clip was me last week when I was all excited and then turns out the readathon is starting this week and not last week when I talked to you. 
So it is now Tuesday of the actual historical romance readathon. It started yesterday and is going on till Sunday. So I, last Monday after I filmed the update, I don't know why, I just like double checked the dates. I think maybe it was because like no one was really posting about it on Instagram. And then turns out it started only now, not last week. Right now, I it is again Tuesday and I haven't read anything this week because I don't know if I mentioned it in the other clip but I am working this week, so fortunately only Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Um, today I actually had a shorter day, so I mean I still do have time, but I need to shower and like I am honestly just exhausted. Like <laughs> I am basically kind of working at like a restaurant-ish, and so it's obviously extremely exhausting, especially even more so because... I'm not used to walking whatsoever, and so my whole body is just in pain. <laughs> I'm still absolutely excited to read, obviously, but you know, just need to take it slow at least today and tomorrow. However, I am not working for the rest of the week afterwards, and I might do some things, but I'm going to go hard then with reading. I think it's just going to be like even more reading because I'm going to be so excited and I'm going to be like, I haven't been able to read, let's read a shit ton. When it comes to my reading plans and what's happening, I, the main thing, I also didn't say, I, <laughs> I filmed this update like two minutes ago, but it turns out I wasn't filming. Clearly, again, my brain is fried. So yes, I am filming in the bathroom. You can see the shower over there. <laughs> Um, I am resting my phone on like a really funny spot because again, I'm exhausted and I didn't want to hold up my phone. I literally think my arm would give out. So I hope this is okay. I just really wanted to change up my location. I am going to be reading this, but haven't read any more of it. So there's no point in even talking about it. The main thing that I want to tell you is that I did re actually I did read like three pages <laughs> of This Could Be Enough, I think, by Alyssa Cole. So this is a sapphic historical romance and I it's a novella as well and I've been wanting to read it for ages and I kind of started a little bit a while ago but then I don't know I just got distracted with a million other things and now I was just like you know what it's time to get back to it. I love Alyssa Cole, but I haven't I haven't read her historical romances yet. And so this is one of them, and I'm really excited to read it. If you're looking for a black author who writes historical romance, Alyssa Cole is definitely one that you should check out, even though I haven't read them. <laughs> I have read her contemporary books and I love them. So definitely check her books out. I she's not really like writing historical romance anymore, but there are at least i know there's a three book series and then this novella at least so i'm super excited and i can't really tell you much about it <laughs> but i'll tell you more when i read a little bit more so i have an ebook of this and i was just like earlier on the bus i was like i'm gonna try to read but then i didn't really have time and again exhaustion i'm not gonna keep repeating that but yes so i definitely want to read this and then when it comes to A Lady for a Duke, I actually obviously want to read that. I feel like it's going to be so fucking good, but I think I need to wait for later in the week because this is a really, this is a really long audiobook and I feel like I'm going to feel better if I read something shorter first that I'll feel more accomplished and less behind. And second main reason is that I just feel like it's going to be super emotional and I'm not ready, you know, with like, I just like, I've been really emotional in general and then the work, like I just need something super short, super light before I can get into that. So I'm going to dive into that later. <laughs> so I think the thing that I'm actually going to start is I think called A Spinster and a Rake. I forgot Ava Devon is the author maybe? I'm not sure. I'm so sorry. This is such a mess. But I was just like, I need to at least do an update even if I don't do any reading, you know? <laughs> so I think I'm going to start the audiobook of this because it's like eight hours something. And so it's a pretty short audiobook. And I know that I heard someone recommend it recently. And it just start, It just sounded, I'm not sure who it was anymore. It just sounded really fun. And I feel like it's just going to be exactly the type of lighthearted, quick, little fun historical romance that I need. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I promise it's gonna go up from here, but 
yeah <laughs> i'll talk to you soon hey everyone so it is friday time for an update and this time it's hopefully gonna be a little bit more put together <laughs> so it is thursday now and i have some exciting updates for you and i'm ready to read a fuck ton and share it all with you and i'm really excited so I basically started um, a novella that I haven't told you about that I kind of randomly ran into. My plans kind of changed, but I can actually update you about the book that I told you I might, I might start because I did end up starting that one today. So I think I'm going to actually talk about that one first because even though that's not like the chronological order I read it in, it is the order that I talk to you about it, if that makes sense. <laughs> so I did start The Spinster and the Rake by Ava Devon, and I looked it up on Goodreads before starting it, and so that reminded me that Jess is the one who recommended it. And she mentioned in her review on Goodreads that it's a marriage of convenience. And I, first of all, it is actually on the bingo board, and I think that the line that I, like, started accomplishing <laughs> has marriage of convenience and I think also rake. And so I think this is another thing that just mentioned is that, like, the hero in this does not really feel like a rake. He doesn't really have that typical, like, flirty, rakish personality. And you don't even see, like, any actions or anything that he did before to be, like, a rake type, <laughs> you know, thing. Um, so that is not really accurate. Like, it mentions it a few times, but it's like, where is that, you know? And so I don't mind, but just like, if that is something specifically you're looking for, I don't think you're going to really find it in here. <laughs> Either way, I'm really enjoying this. So again, it is a marriage of convenience. And so what happens in here is basically that the heroine is basically hiding in this room um, away from like a party because she is definitely an introvert. She doesn't really like socializing. And so she hides there and then the hero comes in and he's like, this is actually my room and they end up kissing and then they get caught. And so it's like the heroine is either going to be ruined or they have to get married. And so the hero is immediately like, he is actually, he gets kind of angry because he thinks that the heroine set that up to trap him into marriage because he's a duke. And so she's, so he's like, you know, that just is his initial thought process. But the heroine is like, I absolutely don't want to be a duchess. This is horrible. Uh, because even though she likes him, she's like, the thought of being a duchess is a fucking disaster because she hates socializing and all of that. So I feel like it's a little bit, like, annoyance to love. <laughs> um, I would not call it hate to love or anything of that sort. It's not, like, intense. But it is also definitely grumpy sunshine, and so the hero is very grumpy towards the heroine, very annoyed. And both of them basically start as being kind of like annoyed with each other and frustrated, but then it obviously develops from there. And it is just really fun and cute and lighthearted and it gets steamy as well. And it's just exactly what I wanted, honestly. So yeah, so I didn't even say I got to like 70%. So um, definitely gonna finish it soon. The only reason why I stopped is because I started having a bit of a headache. I don't know if anyone else can relate, but when I listen to audiobooks for too long, I start feeling weird and like headachey. Not necessarily the actual pain, but just kind of like that weird headache sick vibe. So I did finish a novella, like I mentioned, and that is um, Duke for Hire by Nicola Davidson. Basically, there's like an anthology of novellas that is called Duke I'd Like to F by like five authors. And I actually read the one by Joanna Shoup from there that's called, I think, like My Dirty Duke. Absolutely adored that one. And so how it works basically is that like the anthology was published and it was just, you know, like on sale for a while and it's like no longer available because each of the authors then like self-published it on their own. And that they also have another anthology that is Rake I'd Like to F 
that is still available now. So I think like it's going to work the same with that as well. And so I decided, I was like, you know what, I was looking for historical romance novellas and I wasn't sure which ones to pick, and you know, and I was looking for Nicola Davidson's books because I know that she does have novellas and I really like them. And so I ran into this and then I thought, you know what, I can look up the names of each of the novellas in that anthology and read them all. So I started with the Nicola Davidson one again, obviously. And so I read that and I really enjoyed it. So I definitely... Definitely, I don't know if I'm going to get to all the rest of them. Well, I mean, I have three now. So our heroine, Ada, is basically like, she is kind of like a spinster. She hasn't gotten married. And she's like, you know what? I am done with this. I want to have an adventure. I want to have fun. And so she's like, I'm going to have an affair. <laughs> Her two closest friends know that this duke... Um, has does this thing that like he just basically has casual hookups that he's very discreet about and so they're like you know what we should set the two of you up so they basically have like this affair and this deal that they're gonna be having like a casual relationship for a month and then part ways and of course it doesn't go quite as planned so it is very just steamy and fun and quick to read. I feel like so like every single book by Nicola Davidson is really sex positive and I love that. And I feel like it's really cool to see especially in historical romance and so it was just so much fun and I ended up giving it four-ish stars, 4.5. It wasn't really like entirely a five star. I do feel like some things happen a little bit quickly. Did I care? No. <laughs> so I just really enjoyed this. Definitely recommend it if you want a lighthearted, steamy, fun romance that's also really cute and tender. So another thing that happens in here is Jasper, the hero, is like, I'm just, you know, I just need to get her out of my system, but obviously he becomes absolutely obsessed with her. And so if you like those vibes, definitely check this out. So now obviously I'm going to finish The Spinster and the Rake. Very excited. Actually, where I should start before I dive into the other novellas from that anthology, I think I'm going to get back to That Could Be Enough by Alyssa Cole. So I feel like the only issue that I have with the book is that the beginning is really slow and it's taking a long time for things to like start developing. But I think that once we get there, it's going to be an amazing romance. And so I think that is the novella that I'm going to pick up next. And then again, I have this physical book that I really, really want to dive into. This update has been infinitely long, so I'm going to shut up and I'm going to talk to you soon when I have some other updates. So it is still the same day. It's 11 p.m. now and I have finished some things. I have started a new thing. Let's talk about it. So I'm really happy and I'm feeling accomplished. I'm really excited. I hope this angle is okay, but... I just feel like I haven't fully been in the reading mood that I'm normally in and I, you know, I was trying to focus on watching some things and whatever, but I just, I missed reading and like this feeling of like I want to read a shit ton of things and I really missed that and I'm feeling it right now and it's the best thing ever. I finished The Spinster and The Rake. Which I honestly, like, I ended up flying through it and I, again, like, I took a break but then I went back to it and finished it. So I basically read it in two sittings. We love to see it and it was just super sweet and cute and fun and lighthearted and easy to read. I do feel like, I think I gave it, like, four stars. It's not entirely, like, a new favorite. I didn't fully, completely fall in love with the characters. I didn't completely, like, adore it. But it was such a fun time. It was definitely entertaining and enjoyable. And I just felt like there were some moments that, like, the plot was a little bit slow and things like that. But overall, I loved it. I also feel like in this book, the heroine's mom was actually supportive and nice. Which I feel like we don't see a lot. Definitely, like, in Duke for Hire, the father was disgusting and I feel like that's the case with a lot of historical romances and so that was a tiny thing I really liked. <laughs> and another thing that I didn't mention is that the hero in this book is coded as autistic. They kind of discuss it and you know like all of that and there, there were just some really lovely moments and it was just really cute. Like 
I feel like it was quite low angst. Um, so if you like historical romances that are just kind of more light and sweet and cute and a little bit steamy, I think that this would work great for you. Again, it's not too long. I flew through it. I really recommend it. I honestly don't think I have any more to say about it. <laughs> But really happy that I read it, and it's an author that I haven't read before, so I'm excited to read more of Ava Devon's books, and yeah, so that was a success. And then I also finished That Could Be Enough by Alyssa Cole, so I picked it back up. I feel like the beginning is super slow, and it takes it a long time for the story to pick up, which feels kind of, which isn't fully ideal, especially in a novella. That feels kind of weird, because usually novellas, you know, like are really fast. However, there were some lovely moments in the romance that were just so like tender and emotional and sweet and lovely. And they send each other letters at some point, which I loved. And it was really cute. So I feel like this one um, is definitely more like tender and sweet. And it's not really steamy a lot at all. So if you're looking for a novella and you would like to read a sapphic black love historical romance, definitely recommend it and yeah so these are the books that I finished and then because you know I was like I want to keep reading like I want to just keep this going I started the good girl's guide to rakes by Ava Lee so while I didn't mention this one to you it has been on my TBR for a while and it was a book that like crossed my mind. I have really enjoyed a lot of her books. I haven't fully loved all of them, but they're definitely they've definitely all been um, really fun. And so I wanted to pick this one up, and I was hoping that this one would work for the rake trope, because obviously it's the good girl's guide to rakes, you know. I think I might be like 20% into it. The two main characters basically strike a deal, and so the hero, his dad told him and his brothers that basically if they don't find a respectable wife, they're not going to inherit a single thing because that they just get in trouble and so he gives them this ultimatum and the heroine is super proper and the hero comes to her for help and she's like, you know what, I'm going to help you find a respectable wife and you're going to show me the scandalous side of London because she wants to... Once again, another heroine <laughs> who wants to experience something adventurous and fun and just all of that. And things go on from there. That's honestly like all that I know right now. Yeah, I feel like it's a really common trope for historical romances to have the thing where like one of the main characters helps the other one find like someone for them and all of that, like being each other's wingman. You know, and I feel like it's really fun. So, um, yeah, not much to tell you about it, but I'm really excited about it, and I think it's going to be really fun. Yes, so I'm going to shut up now. I'm probably just going to honestly watch things now, and I might not read more tonight, but definitely going to go keep reading tomorrow. Say what you want to say to me now. I want to wake up with you in the morning. update and an exciting unboxing. So I am once again in front of my little bookshelf and I don't know <laughs> how to figure out the angles. I feel like this looks hopefully kind of good. It's so annoying that you can see me in the TV and you can probably see some trash on the table but hopefully not too well because like the table is extremely messy. I think we're going to start with the unboxing, let's be real, that is the most exciting part. So let's open this, I am literally going to fucking lose it. Like I have been so excited for this, I have been also waiting for it for like two weeks. Why is this literally not satisfying at all? <laughs> oh my gosh that is so annoying, okay. Okay I got it. 
Oh my gosh. Wait, I, I want to I want you to see it first. So there's this beautiful little um, paper again. I'm gonna mention the shop in a second. Oh, there's another little paper. So this is the book. Okay, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it's floppy, it's floppy. Wow, wow. Oh my gosh. So, I got Bombshell by Sarah McLean. And the back is like this, the spine looks like that. And I love this. Okay, so this is also supposed to be signed. So, oh yeah, it has a little, little, what's it called? I don't know, whatever, this thing. And so this is the British edition. I normally hate British editions of historical romance. I just feel like they're, like, I mean, I understand it's like a different style, okay? Like, I get it. And I, I understand if people prefer it, but I have just entirely fallen in love with the couple clinch covers of historical romance. And so the one the British ones never have couples and they're kind of more like censored and I'm just like not a big fan. However, when I saw this, I was like, you know what? There's something about it I fucking love. Like it is just like so I don't even know how to describe it. I just like love the flower and like the pose and like the ev everything about this. So I think it's fucking gorgeous. And when I saw that it was signed as well, I was just like, okay, I have to get it. And so I got it. <laughs> I am so excited. So this is also another thing is I actually really don't like the American cover of Bombshell because I'm pretty sure that also has just like the model on it and not the couple. And there's just something about it that I don't fully love. And so I actually preferred this one. And I don't remember much about it. <laughs> I basically know nothing. Like I've heard like a few things, but I love Sarah McLean, but I haven't read that many of her books and I don't own any of them. So this is my first one. And yeah, I have heard great reviews about this book. Like everyone that I heard talk about it, loved it. So I think it's gonna be amazing. It is floppy and yeah. So I don't know if I'm gonna have time to read it in the readathon, but I would fucking love to. And I'm just so excited. So um, I did get it at the Words and Kisses shop. And I've mentioned it before. I unboxed like two, I, I, I think I've made an order of two books before. Um, and I just love it. So it is not sponsored. It wasn't sent to me. I <laughs> just really love their shop and I want people to know about it. So yeah, it's called Words and Kisses and it is basically a British um, indie little web shop bookstore thing. And it is just, it has romance books. Did I say that? Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I'm once again all over the place. So it has romances, obviously, and that is fucking amazing just on its own, but it's even more amazing because if you didn't know, in the UK bookstores, they literally don't have romance sections. It's just fiction. And lately it's been happening that like, you know, the little displays, like table displays, they have romance. Uh, but they that's like the most popular romances and they never have romance sections and correct me if I'm wrong But I've never found any historical romance at the British bookstores like what the fuck is that about like what what? <laughs> I think like I found it online But never in actual physical bookstores and maybe like Julia Quinn probably that is it like yeah, so absolutely definitely check out Words and Kisses. So that is this. And then I think since I talked to you, I haven't read more of Good Girl's Guide to Rakes. However, I went out today and I got sushi for lunch and I went to Blackwell's, which is a bookstore. And I didn't end up buying anything, but oh my god, I, first of all, they had the movie Heartstopper Edition, which I fucking love. Yeah, and then I saw some romances that I was like, oh my gosh, and... It was like three for two, but there was no third book that I was absolutely dying to get. So I was like, I should wait and maybe check out Waterstones as well. Cause like they sometimes have like buy one, get one half price. And so I was like, if they had those two books on that sale, that would be a lot better. Cause I had no third book, you know? And so I decided not to get it, especially cause like I had a package I knew, you know, uh, was coming. So I was like, I might as well spread it out. 
anyways <laughs> so when i went out i took this book with me again falling into bed with a dude by lauren heath and i didn't read that much because then i had to leave and i didn't have much time but i got to page 50 and i'm so fucking excited for it so i think like i need to relax for a bit so i might watch youtube or something but i'm absolutely reading more of this today like i fucking love it like lauren heath just is incredible absolutely one of my favorites if you haven't read her books yet you need to check them out she's definitely one of the most beloved historical romance authors for good reason and so i am a, i'm already like obsessed like the two main characters have so much chemistry already and so the thing that happens in here is actually kind of similar to um duke for hire uh so like different vibes and like obviously this is a full-length novel and like the writing is different but like the trope is the same you know so it's basically that the heroine is like i don't want to be a virgin anymore <laughs> she goes to this nightingale club the women like wear masks and all of that and so like you know her identity is concealed if i understand it correctly the guys don't wear masks and so the heroine recognizes the hero, but he obviously can't tell who she is. And they immediately are just really attracted to each other and just sparks fly between them. And so I guess like they're going to spend the night together. And that is basically all that I know. And I'm not sure how it's going to continue. So I'll see. I'll let you know if there's anything else important about the plot when I find out later. But I am super excited to keep reading this. I also, there's nothing better than floppy mass market paperbacks. So anyways, I am absolutely going to be reading this. So I think that actually I am going to prioritize this today and we'll see. I'm just so happy about this book and I'm so happy to read this book. Oh my gosh, it looks so tiny compared to this. Oh my gosh. Anyways, I'm going to shut it up and I'll talk to you soon. Hey everyone, so it is time for an update. It is Saturday. It's 2... 46 p.m. and I've done some reading. I finished Good Girl's Guide to Rakes by Eva Lee and I expected to um, start my day by reading this book again but then I just kind of had to do some chores and I ended up you know listening to the audiobook and I finished the whole thing. <laughs> so I feel like I described the plot to you right so um, if you like the trope of like good girl, bad boy type thing, then definitely check this book out. But, um, the hero, Kieran, is definitely like a softy deep down and it also definitely has like the guy obsessed trope or whatever it's called. <laughs> uh, cause he falls in love with her so hard and both of them just like fall in love so hard and... Um, obviously the whole time, you know, they're both, like, supposed to marry someone else and all of that. So, it was just so fun and, um, I do feel like it kind of felt a little bit slow in some parts, but it was so much fun. I loved Kieran and Celeste. I do think it's definitely one of my favorites by Eva Lee and so... Yeah, <laughs> so that is this book. I don't really know if I have anything more to say. Like, it wasn't a book that gave me a lot of, like, thoughts or, like, the most intense feelings, but I did really enjoy it. So that is that. And I do think that I haven't really talked to you about this book since I was kind of, like, at the beginning. I got to page 200, so basically halfway through. So I'm not entirely in love with it just yet, but I do think that the second half of the book is going to be absolutely spectacular. And so the thing, the reason why I think I'm not entirely 100% in love is because it's kind of like a slow burn romance, which I did not expect at all, especially with how it starts. They want to spend the night together and all of that, and so I expected it to be kind of more like a fast burn, <laughs> um, but things don't actually go quite as planned, and so it actually takes them a really long time to um, get together in any way. I feel like this is a unpopular opinion, but I don't really like slow burn. Like, that is something I've been learning and realizing a lot the past few months, that, like, slow burn romance is really not for me. And here's the thing, I've mentioned this before, but I feel like many people have different 
definitions of slow burn in the first place and <laughs> some people see slow burn as you know like the whole time the whole fucking book they basically don't get together don't even kiss a lot of the time until like the 80 percent point of the book that to me is extremely hardcore slow burn and what i see as slow burn is when they get together by the halfway point or later and so that is the case in this book definitely and so like i love the main characters in this i definitely feel the chemistry it's just that like in slow burn it just a lot of the time it is not written in a way that is satisfying to me and that doesn't like frustrate me <laughs> sometimes i just get bored and i'm like when is it gonna happen but uh i'm still absolutely loving it i'm not sure i really want to start another physical book after this um and read at least one more before the end of the readathon because i'm just in a really big physical reading mood which i love to see i would really love to read a tessa dare book and i have the um any duchess will do i just haven't read a book by tessa dare in too long let me know what you have been reading and also if you participated in the historical romance readathon what you read did you enjoy it and also just in general if you didn't please let me know if you like historical romance and what your favorites are because i say this every single time that i do the historical romance readathon that like it reminds me of how much i love historical romance and that i just don't read it enough outside of it like i do read it sometimes but i just feel like i don't read it as much as i would like and i just need to read it more and consistently and so I want to find like new books and new authors and everything even though like I have a lot of options <laughs> clearly my GBR is definitely big but there's always there could always be more you know I just want to mention before I forget that when it comes to A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall I decided to postpone it a little bit because you know like I told you I think I just felt like I am not ready for that emotionally intense experience and on top of that it's a really long book i feel like it's just a book that i really want to savor and not read in one day you know and so i'm going to postpone it and read it in a different vlog i have another one in mind that i think it would work perfectly for so i will not be reading it in this one but it is definitely i think a book you should absolutely check out and like i could already see the intense emotions and like yearning and pining and those like desperately like oh my gosh I just like if you like I know that like I literally read 12% of the book okay like <laughs> um but I think that like if you like super emotional books where the main characters just love each other so intensely and care about each other so much and like best friends to lovers like you know I'm a best friends to lovers stan and I feel like this one is going to be just filled with so much yearning if you like that definitely add it to your tbr i'm gonna shut up now and i'll talk to you soon you just know how it feels when we're falling in love say what you want to say to me now i want to wake up with you in the morning show me there's nothing fake to me now i want to wake up with you in the morning say what you want to say so it's time for an update. I just finished falling into bed with a Duke by Lorraine Heath and I have slightly conflicting thoughts surprisingly. So <laughs> where do I begin? Actually before I get into my thoughts there is something that I forgot to tell you about the plot that I feel like is important to know or like it's kind of fun and you know um, is that I'm not sure if I said that they first meet at a club. Minerva, our heroine, has a mask on. And so her identity is hidden from the hero, but she knows who he is. And so it starts with that dynamic, which I felt like was really fun. And one part of it that I also liked is that the hero, Ash, he... At first, there was the moment where I was like, he's not gonna recognize her. And it doesn't feel realistic, you know? It's like, 
I feel like this happens so often, especially in movies where someone is concealing their identity, but it's so extremely clear that they're the same person. And, you know, I always wonder, like, come on, like, they're literally just wearing glasses or even with a mask, like, you can still see so much. You know, what about the voice and the scent and, like, the whole, like, body shape and height, whatever. Um, you know, all of that. And in this book, actually, the second that I started thinking that, Ash started slightly figuring it out. And so he basically right away starts figuring out who she is. Obviously, he doesn't know for sure. But like he, you know, like, yeah. When it comes to my feelings about this book, I, like I kind of told you, I did feel like it was a little bit slow. There were so many moments that I absolutely adored that had the Lorraine Heath magic and, you know, it just like took over my heart. Um, but overall, like the story didn't take over my heart the way that her books normally do. And I'm not even like sure why that is. I just think again, like it was kind of slow and the concealed identity, I do think it lasted for quite long. And I feel like that kind of held them back from fully connecting. And that, like, held me back from fully feeling their connection. Then, oh my god, like, there was something near the end of the book, like, around the 80% mark, you know, like, the third act conflict. Um, basically, that, like, the hero, I don't know if I should say that, like, I don't feel like it's a spoiler, but it just felt really horrible. And then, like, yeah, like, the resolution of that was pretty good and, like, you know, um... But it still kind of left a bitter taste in my mouth, and so it, like, slightly lowered my enjoyment of this book, which I'm, like, a little bit disappointed, because, like, again, like, Lorraine Heath is absolutely one of my all-time favorites, and so her books are just god-tier for me most of the time, and so this one was not like that, but at the same time, like, obviously she has so many books that not all of them can be a success, <laughs> and, like, I wouldn't say this wasn't a success, because, again, like, I did love some moments in this. I did overall really like Minerva and Ash, and even though there were some issues and things that I didn't fully love, I still overall really enjoyed this. So I'm not sure what rating I want to give it. So that is this book. And I just realized that I completely forgot about the bingo board. So I need to look at it again and see if... I think, I mean, like, I definitely did one bing... I definitely had at least one bingo. Because I did read the Rake book. And so I have one line, which is really exciting. I think that the book that I'm going to start next is Any Duchess Will Do by Tessa Dare, like I kind of mentioned, I think. So I am so excited for this. I absolutely adore Tessa Dare, and I feel like I really need this book even more after this slight disappointment of falling into bed with a duke. I am super excited. I'm also going to be uh, spontaneously buddy reading it with one of my besties, which I am super excited for as well. So yes, <laughs> it is now like 1 p.m. I mean, 1 a.m. <laughs> so I did start Any Duchess Will Do and got to page um, 96. One thing that I just love about Tessa Dare's writing that I feel like no one else does in historical romance is just like the humor and playfulness. I just love it and it always makes me smile or laugh and you know and so there are definitely these moments here that I've just missed. I've just missed that feeling since you know I last read her books and I feel like it's even more so in this Spindle Cove series. The premise is really fun as well, so let's get into that because I haven't described the plot the plot or anything. So I didn't know the plot going in at all. I do like remember now that like I did hear some other people describe it a long time ago, but I completely forgot. And so what happens in here is that the the hero is a duke and his mom is like, you need to marry and you need to find yourself a duchess and I'm going to like train her to be a duchess and she's super confident about it and she like takes him to Spindle Cove. Um, they're like in this room and she's like, you can pick whichever lady you want. And then this girl comes in at the door and she's like, she's late, she looks like a mess and she is, you know, like a commoner. And he's like, oh, you know what, I'm gonna pick her. Because he absolutely does not want to get married. And so his plan is to, conv to convince this girl to come with them to, like, their home. 
and so that the heroine can be trained by the hero's mom to be a duchess and fail miserably and the hero of course makes a deal with his mom as well that like if this doesn't work out she's not she's not gonna pressure him into marrying ever again so that is their plan and of course things are gonna go from there and i just feel like it's so fun it's such a great vibe super excited to keep reading this fucking love tissa dare and i'm gonna talk to you tomorrow so it is sunday now and it's time for an update and a little wrap up it is sunday night and it's not midnight yet and i could have read more today but i just was i just was feeling really happy with what i read already and i didn't want to take it too far you know i did finish one more book and that is any duchess will do by tessa dare so i inhaled this book i get again i buddy read it with one of my besties and it was just the best time as it always is with our buddy reads and um we always read super quickly together. The two main characters were just really cute and I just rooted for them and it was amazing. There were some moments when I got really angry at the hero but like he made up for it you know and it was just super cute and super fun and again just like lighthearted and funny and I felt like the plot was also quite unique and it's not something I care about, you know, like I can literally read the same tropes over and over again, but it is still nice to read a bit of a unique plot. I loved this and I just adore Tessa Dare and um, yeah, now I'm like, what book should I buy next by Tessa Dare? Also, like, oh my gosh, the hero literally buys books for the heroine. He takes her to a bookstore. And I'm like, where can I find a man like that? Loved that. So yeah, that is the last book finished. I mean, I'm actually really happy because like I basically read six books in pretty much like four days and I really enjoyed them all. So this was definitely a success, but I had a great time. That is all that matters. I just fucking adore this readathon, seriously. I can't wait for it to happen again already, like, <laughs> please, um, but again, I, I do just need to make historical romance a part of my everyday reading. As always, do make sure to check out Lisa Lacey and Jess if you haven't already. Thank you to them for hosting this amazing readathon again, and thank you all for watching. So if you made it this far, leave like a dress emoji down below. And thank you so much for watching again. Have a great day and I'm going to see you soon in another reading vlog. Bye!